I'd like to welcome you to this first of a series of video productions that are designed to complement and provide an additional medium for study and review of the North American Institute of Orthopedic Manual Therapy. I am Kent Kaiser, faculty with the Institute. I will begin with an overview of the spinal scan examination, including its purpose and functions, and thereafter discuss the components of the scan. Following the overview, I will introduce the cervical scan. Ann Porter Hoke will present the acute cervical scan and thoracic scan. Bill Temis will present the lumbar scan. And lastly, we'll have some introduction to peripheral scan exam with emphasis in the upper extremity on the elbow and in the lower extremity, the ankle with Ann Porter Hoke. Also, Ann Porter Hoke will present some principles and application of friction massage, transverse friction massage a la Syriacs. A scan exam is a routine gathering of data that provides background and safety information, as well as a quick checks to allow one to efficiently examine a large number of structures, as well as examine all structures that may be responsible for a patient's pain or other symptoms. The primary function of the scanner are to first of all rule out serious pathology, secondly to determine if the patient is appropriate for physical therapy or in need of a medical referral. Third, to assign a regional specific working diagnosis primarily based on pain reproduction to allow you to establish and execute an appropriate biomechanical or neuromusculoskeletal exam. And lastly, to clear the neurological system. First and foremost, the subjective component of the scans needs to be completed. This includes a thorough past medical history and current history, as well as a systems review or medical screening. The key points of the subjective components include gathering the patient's demographics and general questions, having the patient define the location of their pain or other symptoms, noting of behavior and quality of the pain or other symptoms, and learning the present history of onset or surgery, as well as the patient's past medical history. Also important is asking questions regarding medical intervention. Any imaging or other tests that may have been completed, medications, and concerning manual therapy intervention is there a history of osteoporosis, anticoagulant or long-term steroid therapy, vascular or neural compromise, or past medical history of cancer? Lastly, region-specific mandatory questions need to be entertained, which I will reserve for each individual scan that will follow this overview. After gathering subjective data, the objective portion of the scan follows. An initial observation is completed with attention given to the obvious deformities or structural deviations muscle wasting, swelling, dermatological changes, scars related to past insult or surgery, unusual hair patches, skin stains or discolorations, and medic alert tags. There are also region-specific observational considerations that again will be referred to each respective scan. Once your observation is finished, the hands-on objective scan begins. This consists of an articular evaluation, neurological conductivity and mobility testing, vascular tests, regional specific special and or stress tests, a peripheral joint screen as warranted, and lastly palpation. I will now discuss each component's general principles. First, the articular structures are examined via Dr. James Syriac's selective tissue tension test and concepts for differentiating inert versus contractile tissue lesion. The articular testing begins with cardinal plane active range of motion, followed by overpressure at the end range, unless the severity and irritability of your patient's condition is such that you passive overpressure as well as resisted range should be deferred. Cardinal plane mobility assessment allows you to determine a patient's willingness to move, their quality and quantity of range of motion, and if able to complete the active passive overpressure and resistive components, determine if inert or contractile tissues are involved. If cardinal plane motion is benign, combined motions are diagonals, if you will, into the left and right flexion extension quadrants are performed next. This allows a more thorough articular excursion that will require a segment's conjunct motion to occur. Following mobility evaluation, traction and compression are performed as part of the articular component of the scan to assess the integrity of the intervertebral disc and its end plate. The vertebral body, zygoapophyseal joints, and surrounding ligaments are tested. This is initially done in neutral posture and thereafter in flexion and or extension as appropriate. Next, 
a thorough neurological assessment is completed. This assessment will address conduction testing of lower motor neuron and upper motor neuron patency, as well as neuromobility testing of the dural system and the peripheral limb tension tests. The neurological assessment begins with myotomal testing of key muscles for nerve palsy. A key muscle is one of, that possesses the majority of its innervation from a primary nerve root level. In addition to key muscles, there, is also, there are also alternative muscles that are related to the nerve root level, as is the key muscle. However, it is also understood to receive near equal innervation from adjacent root levels. If during your myotomal testing you discover a fatigable weakness in one or more key muscles, support of the suspected palsy must be done by testing the relevant alternate muscles. A fatigable weakness that a nerve root palsy pre precipitates is progressive weakness or giving way feeling with each consecutive repeti repetition. It has been postulated that this phenomenon occurs as a result of more than 80% of the muscles given motor units being involved in the palsy. Hence, as resistance is applied, the muscle has no reserve motor units to recruit after exhausting the 20% available at the given time for resisted contraction. Therefore, each consecutive repetition fatigues more and more. Following myotomal testing, dermatome testing is then completed. This is initially performed via light touch stimulus within the various accepted dermatones. If a deficit is thought to be discovered, a more detailed sensory test with more specific light touch and sharp versus dull testing is then performed. It is important during dermatone testing to test within a dermatome per se versus crossing dermatomes. A nerve root region with sensory deficits will provide loss of sensation in a not well demarcated border. Dermatomes have specific overlap and significant overlap and variance exists amongst each person. If you discover a sensory deficit within a very distinct borders, you should begin to suspect a peripheral nerve lesion or entrapment. Also, on those patients with a good amount of hair on their extremities or torso, you will need to be careful to not wipe across the hairs with your light touch testing. Hair follicle stimulation can be perceived despite potential dermatome deficits and may disallow you from discovering a true sensory deficit. If filaments are not available, Jim Meadows has taught us to use a two-pound fishing line as it provides uniform, consistent pressure and can bypass hair on the body. Reflex testing follows the dermatomal testing and allows us to determine a potential lower motor neuron lesion if a hypo or a reflexive deep tendon reflex is discovered or an upper motor neuron lesion if hyperreflexia is present. Compare and contrast, as with myotomal and sensory testing, side to side as well as within a given side. Upon completion of testing for lower motor neuron involvement, the upper motor neuron clearance is next. Reflex testing has already been performed, and once again, a hyperreflexive state would be revealed with DTRs. Clonus or Babinski signs for all the scans and Hoffman sign in the cervical scan are used as well so as the superficial abdominal continuous reflex in the thoracic scan being performed and helping us in this area. And we'll revisit these in detail with each region specific scan. The second facet of the neurological assessment is neuromobility testing. This involves investigation of the dural system as well as peripheral limb or tension test. The integrity of the dural system needs to be done from a least invasive to most invasive sequence. As performing a more aggressive dural test such as the slump test prior to a less aggressive test can be quite traumatic to your patient. Also, keep in mind that reproduction of the musculoskeletal pain during dural testing, including an example of low back pain during a slump test or with a straight leg raise, is not a positive dural test. The same applies to the specific limb tension test that we'll be demonstrating in the cervical and lumbar scans by my colleagues. Following completion of the neurological conductivity testing, a check for vascular insufficiency performed as appropriate for each region and thereafter region-specific special and or stress tests are a vital component of the, vinyl, the spinal scan. The primary function of these tests are pain reproduction to allow you to further assimilate your gathered data and steer you in an appropriate biomechanical examination. Details of these pain reproduction tests will be visited in each respective scan. If indicated, a peripheral joint screen is then done to determine potential ramifications to or involvement from a peripheral joint and its relation to spinal pathology. 
Lastly, in the objective components of the scan, palpation is performed. This will allow you to confirm findings earlier in the scan will provide you with the opportunity for visceral palpation to complete the medical screening aspect of the scan and aid in determining further the severity, irritability, and nature or the sin of your patient's pathology. In summary, the spinal scan's primary functions are to once again to rule out serious pathology, to determine if your patient is appropriate for physical therapy or needs a medical referral, to assign a working diagnosis, uh, to allow you to establish and execute an appropriate biomechanical or neuromusculoskeletal exam, and lastly, to clear the neurological system.